Welcome to Business Legal Lifecycle TV, the live TV show all about the legal aspects of your business to help educate you on complex legal terms in an easy to understand manner, to help understand why you need to do certain things in your business from a legal point of view, and to help you develop a plan for the future. Our mission at Business Legal Lifecycle is to help empower all small to medium sized businesses around the world to get access to legal advice so that they can help build their communities and make the world a better place. Did you know that any business owner is on average seven months away from losing everything? That is the average time it takes from a successful business to fold when an aspect of their business is not set up correctly. Have you ever wanted to get legal advice but didn't understand what was going on? Do you feel like there is a divide between lawyers and their clients? Then this TV show is for you. It is all about empowering you and your business with the knowledge and tools to ensure that this doesn't happen to you. Business Legal Lifecycle TV delivers a twice-weekly show focusing on the legal aspects of your business. At lunchtime on Mondays, we present Fast Fix Monday, a quick 5-10 to minute show that will give you some actionable steps to consider for the week for your business. And at lunchtime on Wednesdays, we present our in-depth show of between 30 minutes and an hour where we go through complicated legal aspects of your business in a simple-to-understand, plain English manner. And whether that is through educational pieces or interviews with experts in their fields. Afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Business Legal Lifecycle TV. Uh, today is one of our longer format shows, uh, and we've got a really exciting interview. So, Jeremy, do you want to say hello to everyone? Hi, everyone. I hope you're having a great Wednesday. Excellent. So, as I said, we've got an interview today, uh, and the interview uh, Jeremy did is with a gentleman by the name of Peter Docker. Some people may not uh, know who that is, but if you've had any uh, or read any books, uh, regarding Simon Sinek and find your why and start with why and those sorts of things, then you'd be pretty excited to to tune into this interview with Peter Docker. So Peter is uh, passionate about enabling people to be extraordinary, which is a pretty um, great statement. Uh, so he doesn't just enable people, but he enables people to be extraordinary. So he's inspired by the Golden Circle. Uh, Peter teaches leaders uh, and organisations how to harness power uh, the power of why which is what i mentioned before he illustrates his uh, insights by drawing on examples from his previous flying military and industry career to explain principles that can be applied in any business so peter uh, has been standing shoulder to shoulder with simon sinek as i said since 2011. Uh, he's a igniter and an implementation specialist on the Start With Why team. So he's helping organisations harness the power of why to create extraordinary cultures and high performance. So Peter has taken his 10 years of practical experience and co-authored with Simon, Simon Sinek and David Mead, uh, a book called Find Your Why, a practical guide for discovering purpose for you and your team. And that's a step-by-step -step guide on how to discover your why published in September of 2017. So after this interview, don't jump on uh, Amazon or anything just yet, uh, do it after the interview uh, and get that book. So he's globally recognized as the how guy to Simon Sinek's why. So pretty cool guy. Uh, we're very lucky to have him on uh, and uh, giving up his time for this interview. Uh, so, you know, he's trained a number of uh, consultants and various other things around the world. So he's got a lot of experience that he's going to share with us uh, in this interview. So Jeremy, do you want to say anything about the interview before we uh, kick on with it? Yeah, absolutely. I was really thrilled to, to do this interview. Um, Peter's a fascinating guy. He actually, his, his history goes back to his days as an Air Force pilot uh, with the Royal Air Force in the, in the UK. Uh, and he he actually flew Margaret Thatcher around when she was prime minister. So that's that's pretty cool. He's he's worked with, with multi billion dollar companies. He's done multi billion dollar projects. He really knows his stuff. And it was a really fun interview. And there's look, there's three things that that uh, I think that anyone who's watching this will get out of out of this interview. Uh, the first is the importance of having a why. Uh, you know, we talk about about the why. We talk about Simon's uh, Snacks Golden Circle, uh, which we'll link in the show notes. Uh, that's uh, businesslegallifecycle.com.au slash 082, and you'll, you'll find those show notes there. Uh, we also talk about uh, how different businesses can develop a why that's different from the owner and where they should do that. That was a topic I really wanted to get into with him because uh, you know, a lot of the people who do watch our show 
already have a personal why and they may not have a business why. And so that was something that I thought was really important to, to get a, a handle on uh, and to, for people to understand because the book goes through uh, exactly how to build those different whys and what the differences are. Uh, and the final thing is this concept of nested whys, which is something Peter explains that he actually came up with. Um, and it's about having different whys within your business for different divisions, uh, mainly for larger companies, but uh, you, know, you, you get those larger, those larger whys. So look, this is a really fun interview uh, and I, I really encourage you to watch this, uh, take notes, go to our show notes page. Uh, we do also have, and I've posted on the Facebook link and it's on the show notes, um, businesslegallifecycle.com.au slash 082, a worksheet for today's episode. Episode, uh, because there's a lot of practical stuff here that you'll be able to get to get really good value out of uh, this interview. So please enjoy my interview with Peter Dodd. Welcome, Peter, to Business Legal Lifecycle TV and our podcast. Well, hello, Jeremy, and thank you for inviting me on. No problems. Um, so do you want to tell us a bit about your history and how you got into the coaching and mentoring business? Um. <sighs> Well, sorry, I hesitate because uh, um, the, the coaching and mentoring business, I, I suppose, yes, I do uh, a little of that. But, uh, um, well, I started life uh, as a, a pilot, actually, my working life in the Royal Air Force. So I was in the Royal Air Force for 25 years. Mm. And I did all sorts of things there. Yes, I was a pilot, but uh, um, I was a force commander during combat operations. I was negotiating with the Russians when the Berlin Wall came down. I negotiated with the American State Department as well on licensing, export licensing, ran huge projects, taught at one of our colleges, all sorts of stuff. Mm. Um, and after 25 years, I moved on. I worked in industry, in oil and gas, mining, construction, uh, and that was with a leadership consultancy. Um, but after a few years there, I decided that um, there was more I could do, and that's when I came across my friend and colleague, Simon Sinek. And uh, I transitioned into what I now do, um, helping people and organizations, drawing on everything that I've learned uh, through the, the privilege, all the different things I've done in my life. So uh, uh, I, I guess that's how it is. But I never set off to, to do what I'm doing now. You know, it's just evolved, which yep. sometimes is the best way of things happening. Oh, absolutely. I, th I think, yeah, I think people, people often start thinking that they've got to go in a certain direction. And that might change and adjust as you go. And, and when you find someone who, who's got an extraordinary purpose, it's, it's a good thing to see how that, that, that does move around. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, everything you've just said as well is where mm. starting with why notion comes in. Mm. Um, because when we're clear on our why, it helps us to go straight towards the things that we are going to enjoy and find fulfilling. Yep. So what's your why? My why is to enable people to be extraordinary so that they can do extraordinary things. So like every why, what brings that to life, the story is behind the why. Mm. Uh, so for me, all of those different what's I mentioned, if I connect all of the dots throughout those what's, um, the times when I felt really fulfilled, it runs like a golden thread through all of that. Yep. Um, and the theme is enabling others. And when I say, uh, enabling others to, to be extraordinary so they can do extraordinary things. Extraordinary is whatever it looks like for them. It can be big things, small things. Mm. Um, but that's the common theme for me. So, yeah, that's why I get out of bed every day. Excellent. Excellent. So who was, is there, is there a person that was important in your life to help you develop your why? Or, or, or did it just really come from all the different things that you've done over a long period of time? Well, your, your why is it's discovered it's not created mm. um we can talk about develop but it, it's discovered and that's really really important because whether we're talking about individuals or businesses um our normal way of going about things is to create something but yeah. the fact that the why is discovered that's what makes it authentic that's what makes it real that's what helps to build trust and loyalty so my discovery process of course when i first started doing this it was uh, pretty new and the the techniques for doing it um simon had developed the technique but it's evolved since then but people i've been very fortunate because it's people on the start with my team who um have helped me to further discover and refine my why and so my colleague and co-author david mead mm. uh, and indeed simon himself um and by having conversation this is really important i think because if you're discovering your own why then having a partner to discover that why 
is really valuable because they help you dig deeper, they help you to be objective, and they help you to identify the themes that emerge from your stories as you go through the process. So mm. I've been very fortunate in that I've had some of the best <laughs> folks helping me. Yeah. Um, but you don't need any special training um, in, in the, the book, Find Your Why. We talk about the process. So anybody can do it. Yep. Um, but I've just been very fortunate having uh, David and Simon uh, help me over the last few years. Yeah, and that and that obviously does help a lot. I I have yeah in reading your book, it, it's interesting that you bring up the partner thing because that is something that uh, I think is very important when you're finding your why. You you want to have a someone to help you along the journey because we all have great ideas in our head, but how do we find them? You need someone to help extract that. I think it's probably the where yeah. you, where you go in the book. Uh, uh, abs- yeah, it, it, you're absolutely right. Mm. Um, and. This is something actually that comes up quite a few times when I'm talking to people. They say, well, you know, I want to find my own why. I want to get on with it and just move on, Um, which often is code for I don't want to share my stories with anybody else. Mm. But discovering your why is actually a a process of self-reflection and also vulnerability Mm. to to an extent. And vulnerability is not bad. Some of the, the greatest leaders I've worked with and have read about and have seen um, have been vulnerable in mm. terms of letting people in to what they think and more importantly what they feel. So um, discovering your own why is actually a, an act of leadership in itself. Yep. It's um, helping to, to learn how to lead yourself and lead your life mm. and that requires you to open up and so someone that you trust who can act as that partner to ask a questions to dig deeper into your stories without bringing any judgment with with those questions mm. it's really important sadly that often means that those closest to us we can't help them discover their why so yeah. um my children for example um i've I, i'm too close I, I i'm part of their story mm. so i'm not able to bring a fresh perspective so um we, we've had uh, friends on the team help my children discover <laughs> their, their why excellent but, um, yeah. yeah yeah cool so so yeah obviously simon's talk on the golden circle and and you know the ted um video is very popular it's one of the most watched of all time i think um why yeah, do you think it's, it's why do you think it's so popular well i i think for two main reasons um one it's simple mm-hmm. and um by simple we we should not confuse it with uh, simplistic mm-hmm. you know leonardo da vinci said that simplicity is the greatest sophistication and to get down to to boil down an idea into its most simple form it it takes great skill Mm. and i think what simon did with the golden circle is just that as he freely admits um, the idea of starting with a purpose uh, there's nothing new in that at all Uh, but what simon managed to do in his ted talk and book in 2009 was to distill that idea into very simple terms, yep. um, which um, everyone can understand. Everyone. Yep. Um, and because it's simple, it's memorable. Mm. And when something is memorable, it can take hold. So that's the first reason why I think um, it, it's been so successful. The second is that the idea is based in biology, mm-hmm. um, which trumps psychology. So. Apologies to all the psychologists out there, but I think we'd agree biology trumps psychology. You know, biology comes first. Yep. And um, again, the biology it draws on is neuroscience 101. You know, it's very basic neuroscience, uh, not complicated stuff. It's fundamental stuff. Yep. And so, uh, again, that is indisputable, mm. the biological connection. And I think that's what makes it particularly powerful. And for me, having the, the privilege of taking this message all around the world. I think I've been to 88 countries so yeah. far, regardless of culture mm. or background or language for that matter, the idea still resonates wow. because it applies to every human being on the planet because we are all biologically wired in the same way. Yep. So I think those are the two main reasons why it is such a successful idea. I suppose the third one is he puts it across pretty well too. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's quite engaging so uh yeah well as we talked about at the beginning um a lot of the people who do um, watch our show and listen to the podcast have, have already gone through that process with themselves but for anyone who hasn't we'll put a link in the show notes to that that video yeah. so that people can watch it uh 
So I think it's really, really valuable to watch it so you can see the power of what he talks about. Because he does, he does present it in a very good way. <laughs> I think that's, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so as we talked about before we, we um, started recording, one of the things that I wanted to talk about in this, um, in this podcast and, and interview is about uh, group-wise and in particular business-wise. Because as I said earlier, a lot of the people who um, watch us and, and that we work with have already found their why, but they probably haven't done their, their business why or their group why. And so I wanted to have a little bit of a chat around that because I know that a lot of the book focuses in on that. Uh, so uh, you know, why is it important to have a group why? And, and well, let's start off with that. Why is it important to have a group why uh, for a business? Well, um, there are a lot of businesses out there that don't have a why. And before we go any further, let's just define that term sure. because yep. it is often misunderstood. So everybody knows what they do, the products and services. Some know how they do it. Mm. Um, you know, their unique selling proposition, their intellectual property, what makes them different or special. But not everyone can put into words why it is they do what they do. Yeah. And by why, and this is the important piece, we're using that word as a noun with a capital W. It is shorthand. It is shorthand for what's our cause? What's our just cause? What's our higher purpose? Yeah. What's our belief? Why do we get out of bed each day? you know, um, which is distinct from the, the everyday use of the word why. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is really in, in important. It's what's your overarching purpose, your just cause. Yep. And uh, I think when companies first start, when entrepreneurs first start uh, a business, it is not the logical thing to do, you know. The logical thing to do is to go and get a, a proper <laughs> job with a, a salary and benefits, yeah. Yep. But people, thank heavens, do start new businesses mm. um, and they do so because they're passionate about their idea and so quite often a business um, will reflect that entrepreneurs the founders why mm. yes their own higher purpose um, and the business is just one of the what's that they do to bring it to life yep. um, but the benefit of that and it's it goes beyond the feeling of the why is being able to put it into words when you can put it into words and by that I mean a single sentence, Yes. then it becomes actionable. And um, when it becomes actionable, you can then use it for everything from strategic decisions that you make to everyday decisions and the way you talk to people to how you hire folks, because the goal is to hire people who believe what we believe, mm. um, not just hire people who need a job, you know, because when we hire people who believe what we believe, we have to manage them less Yes, because we just need to lead them a little bit, and um, the the value of being able to express your why is hugely powerful. Mm. Um, you know, many businesses say to me they, they want to stand out in the marketplace. Yeah. Well, I say before you can stand out, you need to stand up for something. Yeah. And being able to express your why is being able to express what you stand for mm. in the business place, marketplace, in the world. Yep. And so is that, so do you see that as a difference that, that it should be, there should be a business why as well as the, the founders why, or should they be intermingled together? So uh, for an organization, the why can come from one or two places. Yep. Um, the first, if it's, if the founder is still active in the business, then um, what we often do is sit down and um, effectively do a, a why discovery with the founder. Right. Because I mean, you, you just a moment ago, Jeremy, you said that most business owners, they, they've sorted their own why. Well, I'd challenge that because um, I, I would say that most business owners, founders, they know the feeling behind the why, but there's very few who have put it into an actionable form in words, yes? But we, we would sit down with the founder to uh, help them discover that and put mm -hmm. that into words. Um, and then the process is about spreading that throughout the company and having it make sense within Yep. The, the business that the company is engaged in. So that's the first mm. way. The other way of doing it is when a business um, perhaps has been around for many years mm. and maybe there's been a, a merger or um, the, the company has evolved and maybe the founders are no longer I involved in the business at all. Yep. In which case you do what we, we talk about in the book, which is a tribe wide discovery where we have about 25 people in the room who are passionate about the business and we mm. take them through a process to discover that why. Yep. Um, that's how do, we do it. 
to, to be clear, I, I was referring to the people who usually watch our, our show and our podcast that have developed their own personal lives. Right. Not, not, not business owners okay. in general. I'm, I'm, yeah, very much of the view that most business owners don't think about their why and don't, don't put that in place. Yeah. So, so that's, that's definitely the case. So uh, in the book, you talk about nested whys. Uh, yeah. Can you explain that concept a little bit for the people that are, that are watching and listening? Sure. Um, so, uh, well, I can tell you where the nested why idea came from because yep. it's something that um, I developed, which, um, well, it goes back to my military days. So um, uh, I was the commanding officer of a squadron in the Royal Air Force um, called 101 Squadron. Mm -hmm. And um, during that time, I had many people at our home base in the UK, but I also had many people deployed on operations overseas mm -hmm. in several different locations. And um, in the context of why, it made me think about this, because you could say that, and this applies to every country, um, but uh, I'll just talk about the UK from where I come. Um, in the UK, the, you can talk about the overall military having a why, which would be about defending the security of the, the nation so that mm. we can live the lives we choose to lead. But then um, beneath that, you have the, the three, in the UK, the three different military forces, the Royal Air Force, the Army, and the Royal Navy. Yep. And whilst they are all in support of that overarching why, um, they have a very different character mm -hmm. um, between those three services. And so they would have a more focused why, the way they express that is a more focused way, still consistent with the overarching why of the military in the UK, but um, more focused on their particular service and their particular character. Yep. And then if we take the Royal Air Force, within that you have many squadrons. Mm -hmm. And the base where I served, there were three squadrons, flying squadrons at the time. And uh, they were uh, different in character. And mm -hmm. so they had their own individual whys, not that it was expressed in this way, but whys for the, the squadrons, which um, again, signified their character. Yep. And then when people were deployed, the, the why for that operation would have been slightly different. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we apply this to business, this is where the, the idea came from, because they all nest or nestle under one another. And um, the idea I first used this in the business context while I was working with a large international bank, mm -hmm. and they were very clear on their overarching why. Yep. Um, but I spoke to one of their country managers who was country manager for India, and I explained this concept to him. Mm. And he said this helped him enormously because whilst he was um, very clear on the overarching why of the company, um, the nested why idea allowed him to take that why and express it in language which better resonated with the people that he served in India. So it allowed him to adapt it to the culture yep. of his particular environment. So that's where the idea of the nested why came from. And it can be applied in business, if you have many different divisions, perhaps, if you're a large business, each division may have its own slightly differently worded why, mm -hmm. still in support of the overarching why, yep. um, or it can occur as well when you have mergers, perhaps, but that's another conversation. But it, it, that's, that's where the, the nested why idea came from. Yep, excellent. Uh, yeah, I found that a very interesting concept, and I think it's very important for those larger organisations because you you have so many different mm. people. You know, I, I came from a law firm before I started my own with it had eighty people in it, and there was no way they, we did not have a why in that law firm. But uh, you know, if if you were going to, you would have many different ones for the different areas and the different people that are in that mm. business because everyone wouldn't be on the same page all the time yeah. in, in a large organisation. So. Uh, you know, your book and um, you know, find your why a practical guide for discovering purpose uh, is you know, gives a lot of great practical information about how to build a, a company why. We're all about trying to give some practical information for people that they can go forward. So, other than get, getting a copy of your book and reading it, um, you know, what's some stuff that people can do to start thinking about putting together a, a, a company why? So, if, if, we, if we take the assumption that they have a personal why, and that they that they want to build a company why and involve their staff in that. What what are some things that they can start doing straight away to start that process? Okay, so if um, there are a couple of layers to that question, but mm. the the first the part of it about uh, if if you're the founder and you're clear on your why, um, then the the first thing you can do right from day one, right from now, is to talk about that why in your company. Yep. A why is just a tool. 
Mm. And with that tool, like a hammer, you can build a chair or you can build a house. Mm. And um, the why is a waste of time unless you use it. Mm -hmm. So the first place to start, if you're the founder, is with you. And start to filter all the decisions you make in your business. Start to filter everything you say and everything you do through your why. Yep. Start meetings by sharing a story about your why and what it is you believe mm -hmm. and how that relates to the business. This is the starting point. It's not about what others in the, your business will do. It's about what you will do and who yep. you're being mm -hmm. because people will take the lead from you if you're the founder, if you're the senior person. Yep. Um, that's where it starts. And that then will start to create a space into which other people can step. And you'll find that people who are inspired by your why and your expression of it will come and share their thoughts and ideas of how to bring that to life in your business too. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Um, this is the key starting point, really. Yep. There are other things more formally that you can do, mm. but it, it starts with who you are. You, you know, this is the thing, um, Jeremy, uh, everything we say, everything we do either adds to or takes away from our why. Yes. So just think about that for a minute. If you, if you have a business that is based around your why, your belief, everything you do each day and everything you say will either add to your why or take away from it. Mm -hmm. And along with that, it will either add to or take away from the trust and loyalty that people feel towards you. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yep. So um, if, if for me, for example, my, my why to enable people, um, if I take actions or say things on a, on a daily basis, that do not illustrate how, or do not put that why into action, if I'm not enabling people, mm. then it takes away from that why. I don't feel particularly good about it either. Yep. Yeah? But also <laughs> anybody who knows my why, if they look at what I say or what I do, um, that's contrary to that, say, hang on, yeah, those are just words then, is yes. why, he doesn't really mean it, yeah? Mm. Mm. Um, so it, it's learning to live your why through your business. Yep. And if you focus on yourself and how you are, how you occur to others through the lens of that why, mm. and are intentional about living it through your business, your business will thrive. You will, you will attract people who believe what you believe. People who don't need to be managed so much yep. because they believe what you believe. Mm. So it starts with you. Yep. It's the blunt message. Yep. <laughs> People like to be able to tell others what to do, but no, it starts with you and that's called leadership. Yep, absolutely. That, that makes a lot of sense. And I think it's a great place to start. So you mentioned something earlier that I just wanted to, to um, go back to and just unpack a little bit. And that's around uh, when you're recruiting and bringing team members in, how, do, how should someone use their why or their company's why, their personal why to actually bring in people into their, into their company? So, like, so what, what are some practical things that they can do to, to do that? Well, um, let, let, a quick story on that. Mm. Um, uh, what feels like a hundred years ago now, when the Royal Air Force hired me as a pilot, <laughs> I couldn't fly. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> I couldn't fly. Yes. They then spent about 12 months um, checking that I, I was a good fit. Yes. Yep. Um, through basic officer training. And once they, they, they had decided that, they then spent millions training me to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. Put that into the business world now, and what do we normally do? We normally hire people based on their CV, on their resume, yep. um, on their skills and experience, and hope that they'll fit. Mm. Yeah. Um, but you can always train skills. If people have got the basis competence, what you can't do is shift somebody's belief system mm -hmm. or their culture. Yeah. Yep. So um, when we're hiring people, um, if you're clear on your why and what you believe, and you, you make a sound for that, you speak it out loud so others have the opportunity to hear it, mm. they can then decide if that's the sort of thing they believe in too. Yep. Yeah? Um, and there are some people who are very successful. If you want an example of communicating style with your why and how it attracts huge following, mm. be it through customers or people who would just want to work with you. And there's a great example of this happening on um, YouTube. You can see the, the video. Um, there's a small startup company on the West Coast of States that hasn't made any money yet. Mm -hmm. In fact, they've lost millions. 
called Tesla. <laughs> yeah, the electric yeah. car company. In fact, oh, yeah. the same organization that solved a bit of uh, the power problem in, I think, in southeastern Australia with uh, a large battery. South uh, Australia. Farm. I believe it's South Australia. Just out, yeah, just outside Adelaide. Yep. Yeah, there you go. So the same guy, Elon Musk. Mm. And when um, about 18 months ago, he was launching uh, the Model 3, the latest car, he went onto an empty stage mm. and he spoke about his why. Mm. So then how he's going to bring that to life. And only at the end did he talk about what. Yeah. Mm. Um, but during that time, he received over 250,000 orders for a car that people had never seen, let alone sat in or driven. Yes. And you had to put down a thousand bucks every time you wanted to order. Mm. So that is on a mega scale of how this works. If you are clear on your why and you're willing to declare that and speak it out loud, then you will attract people who are going to be a good fit. Yep. So I, I would heartily recommend using this in um, your hiring process. Mm. Um, but first you need to be able to clear, be clear and put into words what your why is because otherwise there's no starting point. I'm glad you said that. It, it reminds me, uh, we, we hadn't been using our why in our recruiting process. And the last solicitor that we hired, we actually put it in the ad and we interviewed, yep. we interviewed about five or six solicitors. And I tell you, after the first five, I was very, I was feeling very down because none of them mentioned the why, none of them said that. And then one came with, and, and we said, why did you apply for this position? And he said, I read the, I read the first line. He didn't know that it was called the why. He just read that first line and he goes, that's the kind of law firm that I want to work for. And that's, that, that's been really powerful. There you go. Uh, and actually, just very briefly, mm. I, it, it works the other way as well. Mm. Um, um, my daughter, who's 26 now, she's applied for many jobs uh, since leaving college. And uh, in the interview, she starts with why. Yep. And she uses this with the company that she's being interviewed by. And on every occasion, she's been offered the job. Wow. On two occasions, she's been offered the job on her journey home. She's received a phone call. <laughs> On one occasion, she was offered the job before they finished interviewing the other candidates. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. this is the power of it. Um, mm. When we can put into words what we feel, what we believe, yep. then it brings people together with common beliefs. And that works whether we're talking about building a network of friends, as mm. we all do in life. Um, equally, it works exactly the same way when we're trying to build a, a tribe that we call a business. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that. I think that everyone's going to, um, who's listening to this or watching this is, will get a lot of value and can see what they need to do and start putting some steps in place now to, to get, to go forward in their business and to use their why. Uh, I just wanted to talk quickly about the future. Uh, you know, there's a lot of disruption. You know, you talk about Elon Musk and yeah, you know, he's, he's obviously a champion of disruption. What do you see as the biggest challenges in businesses for the next say five years? I, I think, um, well, there are numerous challenges depending on your market sector or uh, your geographical location. You know, my own country go through the Brexit process at the <laughs> moment. There are lots of challenges yeah. there. Mm. Um, but the one thing that can be the constant is your why. Yes. One of the examples that I use um, uh, during my talks is Rolls Royce motor cars. You know, they've been around for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. And um, their why is to perfect to perfect so that we give uh, moments of extreme happiness or yeah. ecstasy, mm -hmm. uh, those experiences. And everything they do is in service of that. And I mention them because um, when you go out, Jeremy, to your Rolls Royce that you've got in the, uh, the, the parking lot. <laughs> I wish. So if, you have, <laughs> if you have a look at a Rolls Royce, um, you'll see in the center of the wheel, in the hubcap, there's a double R. Mm -hmm. And no matter how fast that wheel is turning, no matter how fast that car is traveling, that double R stays perfectly upright. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's both a wonderful symbol, but also a metaphor for what it means to start with why. Yep. Because, you know, if you think of that wheel the, as it's turning, it's like the world and the, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Things are constantly changing, going faster and faster. It is changing all of the time. Yeah. But when we've got our why, either as an individual or as a business, that is our North Star, our guiding light. Mm. And when everything else seems to be falling about and around us, having that why shows us where to go. Yeah. And also, of course, it means for industries where everything they've ever imagined is changing. Mm. 
um, your why is about who you are and what you believe and what you do either as a business or an individual yep. can change mm. um, you can do lots of different what's um, but if they're consistent with your why you'll find it's fulfilling you'll continue to attract that trust and loyalty yeah um, and you'll thrive over the long time long period yeah um, so be in the infinite game the long-term game rather than the short-term yep. game um, and uh, that will see you through regardless yep. of the industry regardless of the changes that are going on stay true to what it is you believe yeah i couldn't couldn't agree more i think that's that's very true and it's it's part of the power of, of what simon and 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 you and the start with white team are, are putting together um mm -hmm. I think that's that's really powerful so obviously yeah we had as, as i said before we had a bit of a chat before um we, we started recording and you've been traveling a lot recently you yeah, talking about this yeah, what, yeah what's next on the horizon for you are, are you more of the same or are you, are you yeah, is there anything, anything, any changes for yourself coming forward? Um, well, uh, yes, I, I am off at the weekend again on my, my travels over the States again this time, working in completely different sectors, which is wonderful. Um, so, yes, uh, there's, there's lots on the horizon. Um, I w don't want to give away too much, but we'll be developing more online, um, okay. online offerings so as people can um, just tune in and download material, webcasts. Yep. Um, to, to help spread this message um, and uh, well there's Simon is publishing his his next book the infinite game okay. um, which will be in the autumn uh, of this year mm -hmm. um, and um, I continue to to take the, the find your why book uh, around the world and, and share that with people too and, and help them so lots in the pipeline and uh, the, this is an ongoing journey of learning for all of us that's that's the business that Myself, Simon, the start with Y teamer, and you know it's about learning. Yep. Um, and we're we're the students in this, and we're just sharing what we learn as we go along. Excellent. Uh, and uh, that's a great joy. Excellent. That that's a that's great to hear, and, and great to see there's more stuff coming. I think you know these days the internet you know provides such a great platform for us to be able to share to to a large number of people what we do and how we do it, so that we can. Yeah. So, so that more people can get access to us than, than ever before. I think that's, that's excellent to see that you guys are going down that yeah. path. Uh, so, Peter, thank you so much for your time. And, um, and I, I know it's early in the morning over in the UK. So I do thank you for, for getting up to, to do this interview. Is there anything that, we're, that I've missed today that you want to get across to the, the viewers and listeners uh, that, that's important? Um, I, I think I'll, I'll go back to where, where I started almost, which is... Um, the simple idea called start with why mm. um, the power of it is quite profound um, but that only comes when we truly understand um, that that message and we we don't make the, the mistake of um, misunderstanding what the why stands for you know the why is shorthand for your higher purpose your cause your belief and when we can put that into words and we share it with others then we can attract people who believe what we believe Yep. and we can use it as a strategic tool we can use it as a daily operational tool yep. um but once we we start to to use it um and we're clear on what it stands for and yep. what it means share it with others yes that's how an idea lives share it with others and this this podcast is a, a great example of that jeremy um you know you're inspired by the idea Yep. So this is an opportunity, you know, it, it's, it's like anything. When we find something that's valuable, we want to share it with the people that we love. That's right. So share this idea with your friends, share it with other businesses, mm. uh, tell the world how you are using it in your business. Yep. Because that will inspire others uh, to do the same. And it will probably attract people to your organization who believe what you believe. And so it'd be good for your business too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, we'll link up a link to the book in the show notes, but where can people reach you if they want to discuss anything further uh, with you about this interview? Well, you can reach us at uh, startwithwhy.com. Yep. Um, the contact page there. I have my own website as well called whynotunlimited.com. I'll send you the link. Yep. Um, but you can reach us uh, there. There's increasing amounts of material to download. There's an online um video wide discovery course as well which follows okay. the same process as in the book yep um but that's just myself and david and simon helping people through each stage uh, via video 
Yep. Um, so lots of tools coming out to, uh, to to help people across the world. Great. Well, we'll um, we'll link all that up in the show notes so people can find that information if if they're interested. So once again, thank you very much for your time, Peter, and have a good day. You're most welcome. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. Take care. Now. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Peter Docker. Uh, he is a really interesting guy and you know, the insights that he has given in that in this interview have been really, really great and I hope you've got out uh, a lot of takeaways. And, and as I said earlier, the three main takeaways that, that I got out of today were uh, you know, the, the importance of having a why and how that helps build a business. And you'll notice um, hopefully at the end there that uh, Peter does talk about you know, the importance of having a why in the ever-changing world you know, with all the disruption going on. And it's a question that we regularly ask our guests is where they see things going. And Peter took a slightly different slant on that and talked about you know, how the importance of having, of having a why so that your business can survive and thrive into the future. So I think that's, that was really cool. Uh, I also thought you know, that really the, the why for the business and how that's different from a personal why and where it might not be different from a person's or a founder's personal why. I thought that's really interesting and, and hopefully uh, you can resonate with that and get some more insights to that. And as I said earlier, uh, yeah, I thought uh, that Peter's discussion about the nested whys and how he developed that concept, uh, yeah, that was something he came up with. Uh, there's, whole, there's a whole part in the book about nested whys and the importance of that for larger teams. So as I said, I hope you really enjoyed that interview. Craig, do you wanna finish off? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and as always, we thank uh, Peter and all of our other interviews, uh, interviewees that have come on our show. We uh, you know, appreciate them giving up their time to share the information with our viewers and listeners. So thank you again, Peter. All right, so uh, we'd encourage everyone and hope that everyone would like our Facebook page. Uh, so then you can receive other content up through that. Uh, and uh, you know, get reminders about various shows and things like that. So if everyone could jump on and like our Facebook page uh, where you can or wherever else you might be watching this on, on YouTube or Periscope or wherever else it might have ended up. So please like that. Uh, as Jeremy mentioned at the beginning, there, the show notes are available on our website. So that's businesslegallifecycle.com.au slash 082, which is show 82. Uh, so if you're interested in that, jump on there and download the, the show notes. Uh, we know that you're going to get a lot of valuable information from uh, what Peter shared with us uh, in that interview. So as always, thank you for uh, joining us today. We'll be back again on Monday for Fast Fix uh, Monday. And we hope everyone can join us then. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs>